who spit in God's eye. Episode 4. Truth. District Investigator Kayla Knox's murder investigation, from which she's been officially removed, has gone horribly wrong. She finds herself the captive of an anxious woman, intent on blowing up HQ despite the gods who made her suffer. Five, four, four, can't, three, three, move, two, two, one, one. Kayla, are you awake? How are you, Doc? I should be asking you that. How do you feel? Like an elephant stepped on my head. Huh, you're lucky it wasn't worse. Your head has taken quite a few beatings lately. I was able to stabilize you, and I think I've kept the brain damage to a minimum. So you should be able to lead a normal life. A normal life? That chance of that for me hasn't been anything normal about my life since the day I was designed. Hi, Kayla. Hachi, why am I not dead? There was a bomb. I couldn't stop it. The building was going to explode. A dud. Not even that, actually. My sources say it had no explosives in it. Just a prop meant to scare people. Guess Violet has a few screws loose. Your precious Abe is safe. Abe doesn't matter. Screw Abe. What? Abe has been exploiting us our whole lives. I'm sick of pandering to that pompous little egg's every whim, aren't you? Doc, what happened? The loyalty compulsion must have been knocked out by the brain damage. Not a cure I would recommend, but whatever works. What's that? I found it in your pocket. It's not yours? Never seen it before. Looks like some sort of primitive communicator. Are you going to answer it before the beeping drives me up the wall? Hello? I'm... Sorry for hitting your head so hard, Knox. And for scaring you. But now... You know how it is to be me. I had to make you understand. Understand a life of fear. Violet Hastings. You escaped. I don't know what you thought you were accomplishing. I'm... We'll see. One big thing I still don't understand. Why did you murder Hal Provender and his heavies? <laughs> I didn't even know about them until John told me. Haven't you figured out who did? Do you know? I have an educated guess. Who? Tell me. Think about it, Knox. Reflect. You have all the, the pieces to the puzzle. I wonder what she meant by that. Normally I'd be puzzling this out with Gary. Hachi, what could possibly make Gary turn against me? We've been friends for years, he's always had my back, then suddenly throws me off the case and claims it's for my own good. What if Supervisor Rice really is just trying to protect you from something? He's never been insultingly paternalistic. How does keeping me in the dark protect me? What was the last thing you talked about with him before his attitude changed? Hmm, I called him when I saw the Beck Heavy who beat me up spying in HQ. He said he'd take care of it. What happened to the spy? Good question. Gary wouldn't let me interview him. I'll check the arrest logs on my watch real quick. Hmm, he was detained for 20 minutes, then released. Why would they do that? He must not have been working for Beck. Must have been working for Abe. I know I recognized him. But why would a heavy working for Abe beat me up? Unless... They were trying to frame Beck for this whole thing. Pretense for a retaliatory raid and looting. Violet did tell me all the sages know Beck is incapacitated. As the only other sage in the city... Abe must feel tempted to pick off Beck's researchers and resources. And if Abe can get a district investigator to discover an intolerable provocation by Beck, like the murder of Provender and his heavies, then nobody in the world will blame him or stop him. 
I need to confront Gary about this right away. (sighs) You should stay and rest. But I know you won't. I'd better go with you. Maybe they'll be too busy admiring my tentacles and reviewing my criminal record to remember to shoot you for uncovering their conspiracy. I feel like the fog is lifting, and I'm about to finally see the whole truth. Are you sure you want to see it? It's what I live for. It's what I do. It's who I am. I investigate. I make up lies that are better than the truth. A false identity here, a false bank account there. I can smell when a truth is better evaded, and this is definitely one of those times. Truth matters. No matter how bad it is, it's better than living a lie. The truth only matters if your lie is weak enough that it's going to fall apart eventually. A skilled liar never need face the truth. It's not about practical consequences. It's my most fundamental value. It's what my life is for. Even if it gets you killed? We've arrived. Hold. Identify. District Investigator Kayla Knox, and this is Hachi. He's a person of interest. Continue. Gary! Kayla. I know the heavy who beat me up was working for Abe. I know this was all a frame up of Beck. Why did you lie to me? I wish you'd left this alone, Kayla. I took you off the case for your own good. Someone working for Abe must have murdered Hal Provender. Who would do that? Who would murder an innocent man purely for political expedience? It doesn't matter. The assassin is usually somebody at the bottom of the organization. Someone expendable, the fall guy. Could be a heavy. Abe has the ability to control them hypnotically, just as he can with us shards. The hooded figure on the security recording didn't look like a heavy. What if... Oh, no. What are you thinking? Kayla, don't. I was there. Hachi, I was there. I had a security pass. I could have ordered Provender's heavies away to HQ or some other location Abe set up, and they would have obeyed because I'm a district investigator. What if I met Abe before, and he left me the post-hypnotic suggestion and told me to forget? What if I killed Hal Provender? I tried to protect you. It all fits. No wonder I was on the scene so soon after he died. No wonder no other DNA was found. The warning! I must have written it to myself. I'm the murderer I've been looking for all this time. I'm so sorry. I only found out when I arrested the heavy. I took you off the case because I didn't want you to have to live with this. Or to put you in danger from those who may not let you live with this. I'm a murderer. Abe is the murderer. If Abe hypnotized you into doing his dirty work, that only makes you the weapon. I need to speak with Abe. Knox, our sage does not need to speak with you, District Investigator. You're off the case. Calling me directly is a breach of the chain of command, which will go on your record. Tell him I know Beck is helpless, and I know who really murdered Hal Provender. Tell 
in immediately. He'll see you. Don't speak to anyone else about this. If you go to Abe, you know you're not coming back. Even if he believes you're still under loyalty conditioning, more than likely he'll still decide your evidence best destroyed. Your criminal friend is right. Your only chance is to make a run for it right now. Head out of the city. Don't stop for anything. Get as far away as you can. Start a new life somewhere he has no influence. Kayla, you have got to get out of here while you still can. I beat an innocent man to death with a bat. I don't think I care what happens to me. I made my way hazily down the hallways and into the elevator. I pictured myself dramatically accusing Abe. Pictured Abe roaring indignantly in his shell about the greater good and his need for Beck's researchers and resources. I never could have imagined he wouldn't even let me talk about it. You have something Violet Hastings gave you. Give it to me. I do? Your left coat pocket. The security scanner picked it up and I identified her DNA on it primitive transmitter and receiver. I want it. Oh, that. Here. Curiosity got the better of you, Abe? Hey, Stings. I hear you've learned to communicate in links with my old friend, Beck. I'd like you to relay to him that his suffering delights me, and I hope he has many long years left. You, on the other hand, have seconds left. It may interest you to know that you're holding a homing device that's communicating with a laser in a supply cupboard on the floor below your office. Since you refused to see me personally, I took a page out of your book and used knock. Security? Security! Too late. Knox, you see how it is now. Even a god can learn fear. A god never was. Just a petty little man whose predictable hubris killed him. Hachi, Abe is dead. Violet Hastings used me, just like Abe used me, and got her revenge. Kayla. I was born from a test tube to be a tool for Abe's power. I've been used my whole life. I've tried to set that aside, tried to make a life for myself and become proud of myself, but the universe won't have it. I'm a puppet, Hachi. Just a puppet. Kayla, what people do with you doesn't change who you are. No matter what they're making you do, that's just them. You're you. I'm proud of you. It's easy to say, harder to live with. You're a survivor. You've been through so much since the day you emerged from the artificial womb into the horrors of Royal Victoria's research labs. You'll make it. You always do. You know, this city is run by two dead gods. When people find out, it'll be chaos. To hell with gods sages and their ordered societies. It's past time we all started looking after ourselves. And each other.
Spit in God's Eye was based on a story by Firestar. Adapted, produced, and directed by Paul Nero. It starred Kylie as Kayla Knox. Jeff Lubavici played Hachi. Paul Nero played Gary Rice, The Heavies, and Zombie Hell. John Allen Goss played Abe. Lindsay Townsend played Violet Hastings. Splendid Bob played John Hastings. Steph played Doc Stone and the Bug Eyes. Firestar played Suzanne Peters. Sarah Marwena type played the dead porter played Zephyr. Pike M was the genetic researcher. Rock Slide was the ball. Music courtesy freepd.com, Kevin McLeod, and Ajay Electric Kumi. Sound effects courtesy freesound.org. This program is licensed for free use and redistribution without alteration. Available on the web at whiteplease.org forward slash spin.